Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you the different kinds of inverters. These are string inverters, micro inverters, optimizers, off-grid inverters, inverter chargers and hybrid inverters. Let's get started with the easiest. A string inverter links solar panels together in a line or a string and transforms their power into AC, which we can use in our homes or send back to the grid. This kind of inverter is common in homes, because it's affordable and straightforward. Its expected lifespan is about 10 years, making it a good choice for grid-tight solar power. However, this inverter must be connected to the grid. If there's a problem with the grid and it stops working, the string inverter will turn off. This is to keep the people who might be fixing the grid safe so they don't get shocked by unexpected electricity from the solar panels. Another downside is shading effects. If one panel in the string gets shaded, from a tree or a building, then the electricity made by the whole string drops. This differs from systems where each panel has its own inverter or optimizer. With a string inverter, you also get less information about how each panel is doing, because it only shows how the whole system is working together, not each panel by itself. So while string inverters are a good low-cost option for getting into solar power, they do have some limits. Especially if your roof gets shade or if you want detailed information on each panel's performance. A micro-inverter is a small device installed behind each solar panel that converts the direct current produced by the solar panel into alternating current that can be used in your home. These devices are used in residential settings, especially in homes with complex roof designs or areas affected by shading. With micro-inverters, only the performance of the shaded panel decreases, without impacting the entire system output. Additionally, they offer the advantage of monitoring each panel individually, providing detailed insights into the performance of your solar installation. Micro-inverters come with a higher price tag compared to traditional string inverters. In the event of a malfunction, replacing a micro-inverter can be more challenging due to its location behind the solar panel. Furthermore, when selecting micro-inverters, it's crucial to ensure compatibility with your specific solar panel, as not all micro-inverters work with every panel. Despite these considerations, microinverters offer a solution for optimizing solar energy, particularly in environments where shading and roof orientation could limit system efficiency. A power optimizer is a device that while not an inverter in itself, is important enough to mention in the list. It's a technology that combines the best features of microinverters and string inverters. Attached to individual solar panels, Power optimizers adjust the DC power using a method called maximum power point tracking. This process enhances the panel's output, ensuring that issues like shading, dirt or panels facing different directions don't affect the overall system's performance as much. Power optimizers are a more budget-friendly option than microinverters, and they are used in conjunction with a string inverter to convert DC to AC power. Not every panel requires an optimizer, only those affected by shade. This makes it possible to install an optimizer on a partially shaded panel without needing to adjust the entire setup. Like micro-inverters, if a power optimizer fails, it might be challenging to replace it because it's located on the roof. Additionally, ensuring compatibility between the power optimizer and the solar panels is crucial requiring careful selection during the planning process. An off-grid inverter differs from other types because it draws power from batteries, or a combination of batteries and solar panels. These inverters are crucial for systems that operate independently of the grid, generating their own AC power. They are ideal for use in situations like vans, boats, remote cabins, off-grid homes, or as an emergency backup power when the grid fails. I discuss these more extensively in my book about off-grid solar power. Off-grid inverters are central to standalone systems, 
providing the freedom to generate and use power without reliance on the grid. Their independence comes with additional requirements. The system must include batteries, to store power and the charge controller to manage battery charging, which will increase the overall cost. Additionally, correctly sizing an off-grid system is vital to meet energy needs, which I've covered in a detailed video. An inverter charger is a device that combines the capabilities of an off-grid inverter with the battery charger, streamlining the process of converting and managing power in various settings. While not all models have this feature, some inverter chargers can connect to the grid or a generator to recharge batteries. I made a video about adding a generator to your system. Inverter chargers are especially favored in RVs, allowing for easy connection to shore power. Although it's possible to set up a system with separate off-grid inverters and a battery charger, one significant advantage of using an inverter charger is its built-in transfer switch. This feature enables the device to automatically detect power outages and switch to battery power, ensuring an uninterrupted power supply. I use an inverter charger in my home as a reliable backup power solution. A hybrid inverter combines the function of an inverter charger with an added charge controller, making it a versatile component for both grid-tight and off-grid solar systems. This all-in-one solution simplifies setup and reduces the need for extensive wiring, making it an ideal choice for installations where simplicity and space efficiency are priorities. Compared to assembling a system with separate devices for each function, hybrid inverters offer a more compact alternative, often resulting in cost savings. Hybrid inverters are designed to facilitate a seamless transition between grid and battery power, ensuring continuous electricity supply without interruption. However, setting up a hybrid inverter involves a bit more complexity than an off-grid inverter, particularly because it must be programmed to comply with specific grid codes, just like an inverter charger. One consideration when opting for a hybrid inverter is its idle power consumption which tends to be higher than that of more basic inverters. For instance, a 2 kW unit might consume around 30 watts when idle, while an 8 kW unit could use up to 120 watts. This increased energy use should be taken into account when sizing your solar system. Let me know your questions in the comments. Subscribe for more videos like this. And watch these videos next.